So we are, our topic is knowing our real nature. Yes. We could uh, think of the three words, the peace, happiness, and love. If we are not in peace, there is no happiness. And if the peace and happiness are not there, there is no love. We do not say, oh, I'm in pain and I love you. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to be in a peace. But what happens, the, peace, uh, the happiness or so-called the love between the couple, the couple fights against each other. You don't know that I love you. Uh, there is no peace and happiness. How can you love? That we do not understand. Yeah. And then the fight continues. <laughs> so you see that first there should be a peace that withdraws the mind within. When the mind withdraws within, there is a sense of happiness within. And the peace and the happiness, when they are present in the mind, then only we can say, I love you, I care. How can you say that I love you? By shouting. It means there is no peace and happiness. So normally it happens between the couple, between uh, the two people. You don't know that I love you so much. Why you are angry? Then why you are angry? That's right. I love you. Now shut up. That's now shut up. So that is, that is attachment. <laughs> that is what the attachment is. So we don't care. We don't, we ignore our self-awareness. And when we ignore the self-awareness, then we find uh, we have a tough time living. And it is because there is no peace, there is no happiness, there is no love. Because the mind is running outside, seeking an object or seeking peace and happiness outside, which is not there. So when the mind is running outside, it is scattered in millions of directions. So when it is scattered in millions of direction, there is no dispassion. And the dispassion comes, is born out of discernment, when we filter out. You know, intellect, one uh, meaning of the intellect is knowledge, understanding, classifying, and ultimately, you are there. What do you mean? How do you know your house? By number, by shape and the size. So you classify. Neighbor's house is not mine. This side, that side, back in the front. This is my house. So we filter out. Similarly, when our mind filters, filters out what is not peace and happiness, then only intellect has the right knowledge. That is why we give too much importance to the discernment and dispassion. One master says that when the mind is moving in millions of directions, millions of directions, then it is an absence of discernment and dispassion. I'm giving a coaching to one uh, he is an Austrian, yeah. Austrian 
student is with me who's, uh, whose wife is in the hospital, suffering from maniac depression. Hmm. Maniac, you know the word depression, uh, we, use, we use the word maniac before depression means that some days, for a few days, you are excited. You say, I have reached, I'm in peace and happiness. You don't care anything. You can even walk naked in the street. And you are super excited, as if you have taken a heavy dose of marijuana. That is, and then after that, you fall down and you fall into depression. Hmm. Maniac super excited, intoxicated. So he is, uh, he was saying, you know, I'm alone, you know, I have sent my young daughter to my mother-in-law and that I'm frustrated. I asked him to reflect on it, apply discernment. How long you have been with your wife, you were never frustrated with your wife. But now she is in the hospital, you are also frustrated. You are frustrated when she is with you. You are frustrated when she is not with you. He said, that is true. I said, why don't you look the cause of peace and happiness. The cause of peace and happiness is not your wife. And you are lonely in your house and you feel frustrated. It means you can definitely frustrate everyone. If you are frustrated with yourself, you can frustrate everyone. So he said, that makes a sense to me, you know, I never thought in this way. I said, you have to think in what is right and good. You should not think with attachment, with aversion, with conflict, with reaction. All these attributes in the mind causes the mind to scatter in millions of directions outside. And when the mind is running towards millions of objects, one after the other makes the mind impulsive, instinctive, and habitual. And that results in the delusion in the mind. And in the presence of delusion, discernment and dispassion are missing. That is why you are feeling lonely. So we can understand the knowledge. There are millions when my mind is running after the millions of objects, people, things. I'm in delusion and that is ignorance. When the mind is running after only one real self, it results into knowledge. <laughs> Simple way to, but uh, there is another way to understand this. Knowledge is there where there is no measurement. Now see that. We have to live, we have to keep our mind in the state of no measurement. So, but what is the measurement? So from the measurement comes the word delusion uh, in, in, in our tradition, and the delusion causes the suffering. Knowledge means consciousness, knowledge means awareness, knowledge means real self. Real self is the knowledge. Now let us see, pick up uh, the word measurement. So what is the measurement in time? Now and then. One 
measurement is now, other is then. Then maybe the past or future. And what is the measurement of object? This is mouse and that is remote. This is Girish, that is N. And third measurement comes here and there in space. My house is here, your house is there. It's a very subtle principle. And once we think of it, so master says where there is no measurement, there is only knowledge. What measurement does? When I say your house is th there, my house is here. So it means there is a mind is a limit. Mind limits itself. Mind does not see the bigger picture. We don't see the bigger picture. We are a human being. We see you are an and I'm Girish. I'm male, you are female. You are, your height is this, my height is this. Go on. Go on. Go on, limitation. And that in those limitations, the mind is constantly running, running and creates a delusion. Because there are so many aspects of the measurement. So ultimately, mind says, I like you, I hate you. That is the journey of the <laughs> 3,000 texts. Every master so beautifully explained. Now see the other point. Just reverse it. Existence is common. It is never changing. I will die tomorrow. The existence will remain as it is. It is common. It is beyond time and space. The existence says, okay, you are dying. Okay. I see millions of people die every day. What a big deal. I see millions of people take birth every day. What a big deal. For the existence. Just see, put your mind into the earth. And does the earth get stressed? If I die or if I am born? Not at all. Not at all. So you see that very measurement is used for the sake of convenience. Your house is in Princeton. Mine is here in Gilbert. But what is, what is inside? What is below? The houses, it is the same common earth. Our master says when you start thinking of finding the common ground, your mind naturally stops wandering. Mind stops wandering. And that mind is ready for discernment and discretion. So when that mind is ready for discernment and discretion, then we can find the innermost self. What is that self? It is pure consciousness. We never use the word Consciousnesses, your consciousness and my consciousness. We say consciousness is one and the same. Whether it is in you or in me. So our master says three things. That real self is known as sat chit anand the word sat means existence chit means consciousness and ananda means the permanent happiness
Now think that why, for intellect, it is easy to understand, but why it is so challenging to realize, to, ex to be into that state of awareness and experience of the real self of the nature of peace, happiness, love, and bliss. It appears it is more difficult than learning computer. So the master answers that real self cannot become an object of knowledge. Did you get it? It cannot become an object of knowledge. This is an object of knowledge for the mind. It be, mouse is an object. So my mind through the sense organ knows that this is the mouse. It is an object of knowledge. The real self cannot become an object of knowledge. How to understand that puzzle? So simple that in the sunlight we know and recognize the world but how the sun knows itself do you need a flame do you need a candle to see the sun no in the sunlight you know the sun you know of the world which is an object of knowledge Similarly, this real self is of the nature of consciousness. You need not to add another consciousness to know the real self. The mind may say, no, I did not understand. So simple to understand. Consciousness plus mouse, mouse is known. Consciousness plus N, N is known to me. Consciousness plus a city, city is known to me. Clear? When I say let me, consciousness plus consciousness. Are you crazy? Consciousness plus consciousness. Why are you are adding it? It is only one. So that consciousness knows the consciousness by itself. You, we don't need any other instrument. No, no, I did not understand. Again, another example, simple. You add sugar into water plus lemon. So you have a lemon sweet water. Clear? Clear? Say yes. Say yes. <laughs> Not a big. Now you add sugar into a desert, it becomes sweet. Why you add sugar into the water and the lemon? Because you want sweet. In the desert, you want sweet. Now, do you add sugar into sugar? To experience the sweetness? <laughs> Sugar is of the nature of sweetness. Real self is of the nature of consciousness. <laughs> <laughs> you see? Sugar is the nature of the, How logical our masters put their argument in order to help us explore the real self. Sugar into sugar. Why you are adding sugar into sugar? Because I want to experience sweetness. Come on. Sugar is already has a property of sweetness. Why you are adding more? You cannot say one sugar does not one sugar is salty, another sugar is sweet. Same way. Consciousness plus consciousness uh, is a is a wrong argument. 
It's a wrong understanding. I want to know the sun. Let me put another sun. Why? Sunlight. I see it. So that is why the real self is known as self-illumined, self-effulgent. That is why we need an empty mind where the real self reflects. As long as this mind is picking up any object, any thought, any feeling, not possible. The best thing is that once we hear these principles, listen to it again, and then contemplate and reflect. So when you are reflecting and contemplating one day what will happen, you, you wake up in the morning. Oh, this is what Weird guy was talking about the real self. This is the real self. It comes from deeper within. Let us see how it comes. Close your eyes. Let us do our simple practice again. <laughs>